Hey y'all, welcome back or welcome if you are new. My name is Sammy and welcome to this week's What's for Dinner. Doing it a little bit different this week to see how it goes. But I figured I would go ahead and just do this voiceover intro and just give you a little preview of what all we're doing for this What's for Dinner. But I really hope you like it this way and I hope you just sit back, enjoy, grab you a drink or whatever you want to do <laughs> and relax with me and let me do the cooking so you can see everything that I've made this week in hopes of giving you some a dinner inspiration for your family for this week. So I have five recipes for you this week. One's a soup and then the other two, one's new to me completely. Um, actually two of them's new to me completely and then the other three are just some quick and easy recipes for you. But anyways y'all, I hope you enjoy. If you do, click that like button. Um, hit the subscribe button as well. And if you've never commented below, leave me a comment. I'd love to talk with you. But now, let's get into this week's What's for Dinner. So, to start off, we're going to do spaghetti with homemade meatballs. And I just make my sauce a little bit different than my normal spaghetti. So, in my meatballs... I just make them pretty much plain Jane with some seasoning, some Lipton onion soup mix, and some breadcrumbs, and that's all I put in my meatballs. And the sauce, I've got some portobello mushrooms that I had sliced up from the appetizer video from Friendsgiving. I'll have that linked below if you want to see it as well. Some Prego, some angel hair, and onion, and that's all I have in my spaghetti sauce. So to start out for my sauce, I just take a little bit of butter in the bottom of a pan. I know it looks like a lot, but trust me, you need it. <laughs> and then you want to go ahead and throw in, that was probably about a half of a medium onion. And I'm going to go and saute those with the leftover portobello mushrooms that I sliced really thin so they would cook evenly with the onions. And I'm just going to go ahead and saute those and put some seasonings on them as well. And y'all know me by now, it's usually Cavender's Nature Seasoning Onion and Garlic Powder. But I just went ahead and threw in some minced garlic right there. Stirred that all together to let that incorporate. And then there goes the basil. Stir it up yet again. And then you want to add your sauce to it. Whatever sauce you like. I just went with Prego Traditional for this time. And then you just want to stir that up, put the lid on it, and let it sit until it's time to eat. Mine usually simmers the whole time that the noodles are cooking, um, if not longer. Um, this was during the whole time the meatballs and everything were making. So there's my pasta right there. You see the meatballs right there in the back. I just bake those in the oven. And then there is my sauce. So we're going to go ahead and plate that on up. And y'all, this was so good. It was so good and quick, besides, you know, taking the time to have to roll all the meatballs. But you could definitely use frozen meatballs if you want to. But I just wanted to go ahead and make homemade meatballs. And I did not serve this with any bread. I wasn't feeling it this night. I know that's a shocker. <laughs> but we just had it as is, and it was so, so good. That sauce was amazing. Um, so if you're looking for something different or a variation, Give this recipe a try, y'all. All right, so up next is cracked chicken noodle soup. This was so, so good with me and my brain thinking. <laughs> but anyways, you'll need some chicken broth, a hill container, some bacon pieces. You can fry your own or use the bag like I did. Some ditalini noodles or noodles of your choice. Heavy whipping cream, a can of cream of chicken with herbs. This is a shredded rotisserie chicken that I bought and just pulled it off the bone. A pack of cream cheese and a pack of ranch or two, depending on your taste. <laughs> but to start out with, we're gonna go ahead and um, that cream cheese right there, I softened in the microwave so it would be easier to mix together with the cream of chicken soup. So that's what you're gonna see me do here. And then once you dump both of those in there, you just want to cream that together really well. Um, just to make sure there's no lumpies in that cream cheese or as best as you can. And I do have the heat on, I believe medium, if I'm not mistaken, just to kind of help warm that up. And then you want to dump in that whole package of ranch dressing. Um, probably about a half a cup of bacon to three quarters of a cup. And then I go ahead and stir that on up. 
And this is where you're going to go ahead and add in your chicken broth. It's a 32 ounce container. So I go ahead and dump all that in there. And then I go over to my sink and fill that carton about halfway up again. That way you can have more liquid if you want to, or you can just use more chicken broth. But I just chose to use water and I go ahead and put that in there as well. Then you want to stir it to get it as smooth as possible. Just to make sure there's no lumpy bumpies in there. But anyways, after that, that is when you want to go ahead and add in about a cup of heavy cream into your saucepan, or you can use a little more if you want to, but you have to look and see what the consistency of it is, is after it's all cooked. So then you add in your shredded chicken. This was pretty much a whole shredded chicken, if I'm not mistaken, minus the legs and stuff, because everybody always eats those. So those were both of the chicken breasts, the tenderloins, and everything after it. Um, so I used Cavender's garlic powder, onion powder, and nature seasoning as the seasonings of choice for my soup. Once you have that stirred together, that is when you want to go ahead and add in your pasta. I probably used about a cup and a half of that pasta. And then all you have to do is just stir that all in together, put the lid on and let it cook until that pasta is tender. And here it is after it is cooked for the time that it needed to. Probably I let that sit there about 20 to 30 minutes and just come back in and, you know, stir it up every once in a while. This was so good and thick and hearty and just a very good comfort food on a cold night. And then I served mine with some shredded cheddar cheese and some fresh green onions on top. And y'all, this was definitely a winner, winner in our book. So we will be making it again. It's done been put into our favorite soup book and our, my recipe book, I should say. And I'll have the recipe linked below as well. All right, now this recipe I found on TikTok. <laughs> so I will try to link it below. Um, so it's not my recipe, so I you know, won't have it typed up, but I'll see if I can link the video where I found it at. But you just take some fresh um, boneless, skinless chicken breast. You need some mayonnaise, Worcestershire, <laughs> Worcestershire. Um, some ranch dressing seasoning again, um, Cajun seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder and was it black pepper i think and paprika you don't see the back um the black pepper here but um i went back and watched the video again and she did use it so you also need black pepper for that so to start out with i cut those chicken breasts in half just so they would cook evenly and quicker and then what you want to do is just poke holes through all of them on both sides and then you go ahead and put all of your seasonings on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, so now that you have that first side seasoned, um, you'll go ahead and take your mayonnaise and just put a little bit on each of those pieces of the chicken breast. And then once you do that, you wanna try to pat that mayonnaise on there. Um, but as y'all can see, it wasn't really working for me, so I just decided to smooth it all over. Um, they say to pat it so you don't mess up the seasoning, but it is what it is. And then you'll wanna flip that chicken over and do the exact same thing thing to it on that side and then this is where you take the Worcestershire and you pour it in between there because I didn't want to dirty up another pan so technically you could get another bacon dish and <laughs> put the Worcestershire in there and then put your chicken over top of it but this worked just fine so I just put enough to coat the bottom in between all of those pieces I really don't know how much you put in there but anyways so once you get all that done, you put it in the oven and bake it at 400 for 40 minutes. I know that sounds like a lot, but trust me, you need to do it that way. <laughs> 
But as a side this night, I just made some sauteed spinach because that was quick and easy. And for some reason I was craving some spinach. So I felt like Popeye the Sailor Man, you know, her. <laughs> But anyways, I'm just putting my favorite seasonings in that with a little bit of butter and then I'll put the lid on it and just kind of let that saute down as I throw some broccoli out the side of my pan. But broccoli, goodness gracious, as I throw the spinach out the side of my pan. <laughs> but anyways, I just let that cook until it gets all nice and tender and warmed up. And here it is all ready to go and yes that is my tea in the back because I needed to make some tea y'all because we can't have dinner without sweet tea oh, it's my weakness but look at that chicken oh my goodness it was so good um careful on the Cajun seasoning though if you don't like Cajun season you might want to take that out but we love it here um but just remember you have seasonings on both sides of your chicken so be be careful with that but this chicken was so good and tender and juicy it was just it was spectacular and no you do not taste the mayonnaise it just helps tenderize the chicken and keeps it nice and juicy so that was dinner for this night and it was so so good all right and this one is pretty pretty easy and simple you can't get much easier than this <laughs> I just took some frozen pizza I think it was the three meat flavor cooked it to the directions on the back of the packaging and we served it up for some ranch this was a night after work and it was a week and a half at work let me tell you I love my job but sometimes it it's whew, it's a lot so I wanted something quick and easy and the way I see it, as long as your family is fed and you have a meal on the table, there is no shame in your game. Just as long as your family's fed, don't ever feel guilty about it. So this is what we had for dinner on this night. <laughs> and last but not least, um, I did some chicken salad sandwiches with tater tots. So basically I took the Sam's Choice or whatever the chicken is from Sam's Club, um, the canned chicken, I drained it, I put it in my bowl. I'm gonna make some tater tots up with it. And to make my chicken salad for this time, I just did it easy peasy lemon squeezy and put some mayonnaise and some seasoning in it. That is all I did for this night. Um, that's how my whole family likes it so I couldn't get fancy with it but anyways <laughs> that is what we had for dinner this night and I just cooked those tater tots to the directions on the back served it up with some ketchup and on my chicken sandwich you've got to have you know those nice slices of tomato on there too bad tomatoes are out of season right now though because I could really use a garden tomato <laughs> But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for coming back for another What's for Dinner. And I hope you got some yummy meal inspiration or dinner ideas from my video this week. But until next time, don't forget to leave me a comment below. I'd love to get to know y'all. Hit that like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And until next time, y'all, God bless. Bye.